So it is my pleasure to introduce our speakers. With us today is Don Lyford, who is project manager with the New Hampshire Department of Transportation. Don has 39 years of experience working on a wide variety of transportation projects. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering and is a registered professional engineer in New Hampshire. Uh, Don currently has several active projects at various stages of development throughout the state and has been involved with the development of I-93 Bow to Conquer project since the planning study began in 2003. Jean McCarthy is a senior project manager with McFarland Johnson in Concord. Jean has 29 years experience working in a wide variety of transportation projects. He holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Civil Engineering and is a registered professional engineer in six states. Jean is currently managing the consultant teams on the Bow Concord Interstate 93 study, the Sewell's, Fa Sewell's Falls Bridge Placement Project, which uh, was a really a nice, nice project that came out well, as well as the Concord Main Street Complete, uh, Complete Streets Project. So we're going to invite Don to come up and open the program up, and he will turn it over to Gene, who will walk us through the detail, and then we'll have some time for some Q&A. Thank you, uh, thank you, Tim. Thanks for having us here today. Uh, we had a nice, quick lunch. That was tasty. Uh, I'm just going to do a, a few words and then turn it over to Gene. He'll do a presentation and then we could do questions and answers after that. Uh, we did have a formal public hearing November 14th for the project. Uh, there was a 30-day comment period that went with the hearing and the environmental document. <clears throat> that comment period just ended this past Friday. So we got some letters, um, emails, correspondence in the comment period, and we also had the uh, input from the hearing so we're going to go through that, all that input, and try to resolve the questions, comments, <laughs> concerns. And that'll uh, be put into a report of the commissioner. And that report of the commissioner will go back to the uh, special committee that chaired the public hearing in November. And, and once, once we've presented that to them, they'll either fine for the project or cancel the project. Hopefully they don't cancel the project, but that is an option. So. With that, I'll turn it over to Gene, and he'll go through his presentation. Thanks. All right, so uh, the presentation I'm going to make this morning is very similar to the one that was given at the public hearing uh, that took place in November. Uh, so I'll go through this fairly quickly, uh, but I certainly want to give everybody a full understanding of what is being proposed, why it's being proposed, and some of the impacts and uh, you know consequences of what we're uh, proposing and then I'll open up for questions at the end. Uh, so, uh, quick introductions, uh, I'll go through the project history. As uh, Tim said in the introduction, Don and I have both been working on this project for about 15 years, so there is a lot of, a lot of good background, so I see a lot of familiar faces through the last 15 years working on the project. Uh, most of the time this morning we'll be talking about what we are proposing very specifically, so you have a full understanding of what the project will end up uh, constructing. Talk about the environmental assessment just briefly in terms of what has been evaluated, what the costs are, the schedule moving forward, and then we'll open up for questions. <clears throat> so just to tell you an idea of what the footprint or the, the limits of the project, so this is the this is I-93 Bow and Concord, so the project begins um, on the south end, it starts at the uh, portion of 93 that starts to taper down as you approach uh, Interstate 89. Uh, continues all the way up through downtown Concord, past exit 15, and then by the time it, we finally get all the improvements done, you're pretty much at the bridge that crosses the Merrimack River. <clears throat> the project also includes uh, segments of Interstate 89, so it includes exit 1 in Bow and a portion of 89 also includes a portion of 393 starting at exit 15 and including exit 1 on 393 up until just short of the bridge over the Merrimack River. So it's a pretty large project. It involves three different interstates. There are seven full access interchanges. 
two of which are what we call system interchanges, which link to, in this case, interstates. So pretty important regional connections that are made um, throughout this project. <clears throat> so the history here goes back to what we call, this is a three-part process. Um, part A was a planning study that took place between 2002-2008. Uh, that really looked at broad statements of goals. Uh, we developed some uh, alternatives. That these were still very broad alternatives. They weren't very specific. Determined that we would be putting together what is called an environmental assessment, and then there was a report that went uh, with that study. Towards the end of that study, we realized that the funding for the overall project wasn't really uh, available, and that uh, there were what we call red listed bridges within the corridor that needed attention. So the work that you've seen out there uh, that concluded in 2016 rehabilitated or replaced four of the red list bridges that existed at that time, which was the exit 14 rehab, and then the bridges that the two bridges that take 93 over 89 were replaced and will can be they do accommodate what we're proposing as does the new bridge at exit 12, which is 3A over 93. That bridge will stay intact through this project. So then in around 2013, this uh, part of the project began and really with the goal of selecting a preferred alternative, which, alternative, which I will present, uh, finish the environmental document, which is the, the, the document that has been circulated and then conduct the public hearing which as Don said took place on November 14th. Once that process is finalized as Don discussed we can move into final design for the project. <clears throat> so again here's what the proposed project is. Again uh, it is the I-93 project and the results of the traffic analysis did indeed indicate that this interstate corridor needs to be widened. So the project will widen the interstate. Uh, right now it is what we would refer to as a four-lane, basic four-lane interstate. It would be widened up through exit 15 to be a basic six-lane interstate. You would have three lanes in each direction. Um, in between each of, I'm going to go back one, sorry. In between each of the interchanges, we're also proposing auxiliary lanes. So these are the lanes that when you get on the interstate, you don't actually have to merge with the traffic. You'd have your own lane, but then that lane would drop at the subsequent off-ramp. So in the segments between these interchanges, there's actually eight lanes. And the only exception to that is, uh, would be between exit 15 and 14 on the northbound where we actually eliminated that segment, and I'll discuss that later in more detail. <clears throat> so what we have here is this is the typical section that we've developed. This shows what's out there today, four lanes, uh, 10 foot shoulders. The median does vary in different uh, areas, <clears throat> but what's being proposed is what we have down here. So in each direction you have your basic three lanes, you have in, in between the interchanges you have the auxiliary lane, and then we have the full width shoulders both inside and outside. <coughs> So you can see that this is a pretty substantial widening of the interstate through this section of Bowen Concord. <clears throat> now, one of the obvious things about this project that have made it very challenging is that while we have about five miles of interstate, we're dealing with seven interchanges. So that really was the, the major challenge here was to modernize these interchanges improve their safety, but also maintain access. Everyone likes the access that all of these interchanges provide, and we wanted to do our best to maintain those. So what we ended up doing in, in the uh, generation or the evaluation of these uh, areas is we separated the project into four areas, and I'm going to go through each of those areas separately. So we have really the bow area, which includes the 9389 interchange and exit 1 on 89. We just call that the I-89 area. Then we talk about exit 12, exit 13, and the exit 14, 15 area that also includes exit 1 on 393. So for each of those four seg segments, I'll go through sort of this list of 
items and um, make sure you understand what are some of the issues that we encountered and why we came up with the solution that we did. <clears throat> so we're going to start at uh, the southern area. Uh, this particular location, you have the orientation north is up. So you can see this is 93 coming through here. These are the bridges that were recently replaced, so those would remain. And then we have exit one on 89. So the, some of the uh, real issues that we have here really is the fact that exit one is so close to uh, 93 and anyone who lives in Bow tries to use this interchange to access 89 or 93 understands the challenges that that poses. So the things that we had to deal with here is what we call weaving and that's when you're trying to get onto the interstate and other people are trying to get off and you have all this mixing of traffic, um, at this case, high speed, um, we don't have enough distance uh, to do that in a safe uh, and efficient manner. So both of the, what we call weaving segments between exit one and the ramps to 93, both southbound and northbound are, are issues. They're things that we want to address to make them safer. <clears throat> There's also, the weaving that occurs on this separate what we call a collector distributor road. So this is the northbound uh, 93 traffic going to 89 both off and on. We have those loop ramps and I see this every morning seeing the people going through that weave. There's a high volume of traffic there both on both of those loops that are trying to use that very <coughs> short segment of collector distributor road. So those are three of the sort of the operational issues that we were attempting to address and also the bridge that carries uh, 89 over South Street and Logging Hill is now on the state's red list so that bridge needs to be addressed and in this case it will be replaced so that is part of the project. So the alternative that we're proposing is what we call concept K. So con we developed three different concepts for this alternative. Uh, this one was deemed to be the preferred. <laughs> and a couple of things that this does do um, for uh, the two weaves that occur uh, between exit 1 and the ramps to 93, those weaves have been eliminated. And we've done this by grade separating those movements so that all that interaction that is currently occurring doesn't occur. Now that's accomplished by, in the southbound direction, we've uh, proposed this collector distributor road that you can kind of see here. That would mean that people who were coming down Interstate 89 heading to southbound 93 would actually get off back here, follow the collector road, come along, and then get on the way they do today. The traffic that's coming on from exit 1 would actually cross underneath that collector road. They can get on to 89 <coughs> here and go, for, go north and use the loop to go to northbound 93, or they can come along here and use the ramp to go southbound. So all that interaction that currently occurs has been eliminated. You can, all, you can still make those movements, but you no longer have to compete with that other traffic. <clears throat> a similar uh, solution for the northbound weave is that the traffic that's coming from uh, Bow Junction would actually come through this new uh, connector road that would go underneath and connect to South Street here and then the ramp that carries the traffic from southbound 93 would cross over and enter 93 or 89 excuse me and continue north. Again all those movements are maintained but none of that interaction would occur under this scenario. And then the last weave which was this weave on the, uh, the collector distributor road here <clears throat> we're proposing a new connector that would take the northbound 93 traffic that's heading to northbound 89 and take them off here and have them come underneath underneath the new bridges and they would go to 89 northbound. So while the, the weave still exists on that collector distributor road, we've just taken a significant portion of that traffic off so that while there's still that weave, there's much less traffic in that weave that uh, causes some of the operational issues. <clears throat> so one of the concessions that we had to make in terms of providing both this uh, new connector road is that the ability for uh, drivers to currently access Route 3A directly from 89 
is no longer there. The access is still there, it's just that now if you come down 89, you just keep going all the way, you stop at that intersection at Bow Junction. Conversely, if you're at Bow Junction and you want to go on 89, you just get on and go straight to 89. What this is going to end up uh, proposing is that if you want to go northbound at 89, you'd actually use this new connector road. You'd have to go through this signalized intersection on South Street, get onto the ramp, and then still go north. It's not there much, much longer. It says you do have to go through an additional signal at this location. The southbound traffic has a couple of uh, options. They could actually get off at exit one, use Logging Hill, and use the new connector road to get to 3A. Um, they, could, they could actually continue all the way down, use the two loop ramps here, and what we're also proposing is the loop ramp that exists today would be modified that would connect to a new intersection on this connector road, and then that would provide access to 3A. So that those cars could use the two loops and then get to 3A as well. Or they could certainly, if you're heading to, say, the northern parts of 3A, you could just get on 93 and go up to exit 12. So the, it's, the access is still there, it's just uh, not as direct as it is today. And then all of everything that you see on this uh, slide in terms of the widening, of uh, logging hill, the widening of 89, 93 is all included in the, in the cost for this segment. So that's what's being proposed at the, uh, in this I-89 exit one area. So move into Concord now. Uh, this is the area of exit 12. In this case, uh, northbound is kind of up and to the right a little bit. Um, the bridge uh, that was done recently is here, so that bridge will remain. It was built to accommodate the, any potential widening of, uh, of 93. Um, some of the issues that we have here, uh, because each direction of traffic has two uh, exit ramps at exit 12, the, the deceleration approaching those ramps is, is deficient. And the one that I can, that I, you know, drive most often is the southbound when you're taking this loop and you pass that ramp and you really have to hit your brakes to slow down before you hit the tight curve right there. <clears throat> um, and then the other thing, there is a red list bridge on this graphic. It's the southbound 93 over uh, Hall Street. That bridge is on the red list and this project is proposing to replace both of those bridges. Um, so the proposal will look a little similar or familiar to some of you. Uh, this is something that was uh, proposed at the time that the bridges, uh, that this bridge project was proposed. Um, and what this is doing is it's eliminating one of the exit ramps in each direction, making all the exiting traffic use one ramp and come to a single intersection with 3A. <clears throat> so that existing ramp right now that, that's sitting right there, that would be eliminated. The uh, ramp that exists right here currently would be eliminated. And all exiting traffic would go through an intersection where we are proposing what we call, what these are called uh, hybrid roundabouts. So they have some two lane elements and some one lane elements. And this is similar to what was proposed five or six years ago. Um, definitely uh, they operate very well. Um, and other than that, um, one of the things you'll see at this graphic is how that in between exit 12 and 13, you can see what, what the, the full eight lane segment of 93 does look like. <clears throat> uh, moving to exit 13, <clears throat> this area, um, the improvements at exit 13 were completed in about 2002, the bridge and the interchange were, were all constructed to accommodate a six lane interstate. So all that, the single point uh, inter intersection that we have here, the bridge, all those retaining walls will all stay intact as part of this project. So that planning did pay off. <clears throat> the one issue that we still have out here, and any of us who drive this in the morning see this, in the morning commute there's so much traffic getting off northbound at exit 13 that is coming onto Manchester Street 
this ramp is backing up all the way onto 93 almost on a daily basis. So that is a, a real concern both operationally and safety. <clears throat> so the proposal that we have will complete the widening of 93, but you'll see none of these ramps really have much work because they were all built uh, to accommodate this layout. The one exception is for the northbound exit ramp, we are going to widen this ramp and we're going to widen it to provide a double right turn off of the ramp onto Manchester Street. Um, we're also going to put that put a signal on that right turn. Right now, you legally you have to stop every time every car comes off of that ramp, and that balances well with a, a project that the city has planned uh, for some time in the future to improve the intersection of Manchester Street and Old Turnpike Road. So obviously, there's a lot of uh, people who work up on the heights, including me. So there's, in the morning, there's a lot of traffic that comes off, comes over, and goes up Old Turnpike Road. And then in the afternoon, they come down, make the right turn, and then the left turn on. So when these two projects are completed, that'll have a, essentially two lanes making that movement or accommodating those movements every day. And that's about it for exit 13. So uh, the exit 14, 15 area, a uh, very uh, challenging area. We have three interchanges in this area. Uh, we have um, a lot of weaving, and we also have my favorite area, which we call the pinch point. <clears throat> so in this uh, one location, in this one graphic, we have four red listed bridges. So the bridge that takes Interstate 393 over 93 is red listed. The bridge here that's 202 over Constitution and the railroad is red list. The 90, 393 over College Park is a red list, and also the Delta Drive Bridge over 93 north of Exit 15. Those are all red listed bridges. Um, right now, our cost <coughs> estimate assumes that they'd all be replaced. Um, that is most likely just in terms of accommodation of the widening that we need to do. <coughs> we also have eight weaving segments in this one area. So the two weaves uh, between exit 14 and 15, and you can see right in here, very short distances where the weaving occurs. You have the weaving between exit 1 and exit 15 in both directions. And then you have four weaves within the exit 15 interchange itself. Two on 93 and two on 393. So there's eight of them just in this area right here. Then one of the more challenging areas of this project <clears throat> is this area that we call the pinch point. And anyone who drives up here as you approach exit 14, you'll notice how close the interstate gets to the river. So any widening that we propose here is going to have some impact. So we have the, the river, the interstate, there's a um, utility easement that exists between the interstate and the railroad. And in that utility easement is uh, the main unitil uh, power that comes out of this substation and flows down and goes to another substation that's down near exit 13. So that um, is in that area. The city of Concord also has their main sewer interceptor in that corridor. Um, and then obviously you have the rail corridor and then you have the uh, capital shopping center right there. So anything we do here potentially will impact multiple facilities in that area. <clears throat> so the concept that we have developed is called uh, concept F2. This is actually a blended uh, concept from two others that we had developed um, previously. Um, I'll start with exit 14. <clears throat> the, the main difference from what's out there today is that we've eliminated the northbound entrance ramp from Loudon Road on to 93 at this location. Uh, it was chosen because one, it had the least amount of traffic, and by eliminating that ramp, we were able to shift the interstate further to the east. We're still not into the river, but by shifting that, we were able to uh, avoid some 
costly impacts, but also we were to able to maintain the intersection of Loudon Road and Stickney Avenue, which was a, a major um, issue for the city that this is an area that they really want to redevelop. Uh, all of the other concepts that we had developed that maintain this on-ramp had 93 further to the west and we were not able to maintain that intersection with Loudon Road. The other things that we avoided, there's two historic uh, buildings in this area, one of them being the Ralph Pill building. We, were, we avoided hitting the electrical substation. We were able to accommodate um, the utilities. We're not touching the railroad corridor or the shopping center. So we were able to avoid some of those impacts. And everything else uh, with regards to exit 14 is still a diamond interchange and will function much like it does today. The one real difference is that we've eliminated one intersection. So obviously anyone who drives through Loudon realizes there's so many intersections there. This does eliminate one of those intersections. <clears throat> the configuration of exit 15, uh, the existing inter uh, interchange is what is called a full clover leaf. This is what is called a clover stack. So it still provides all of the same mo movements from the different roadways, but we eliminate two of the loops and replace them with direct ramps. By making that change, we've eliminated all four of the weaves that occur within exit 15. And it still fits within you know, the footprint here uh, of exit 15. Um, so this, uh, w with that one change, we eliminated those four weaves. By eliminating the entrance ramp from exit 14, we, we also eliminated the weave for northbound between 14 and 15. And what's being proposed southbound is, a, what is another collector distributor rope. So that weaving between 15 and, and 14 southbound would not occur on the main line, but on a collector distributor road that would be adjacent to the interstate. One of the interesting things also is that for southbound traffic, if you want to get to, you know, use exit 15 or 14, you would have to exit north of 15. So this would be, we'd have to sign this well, so that if you wanted to get to Loudon Road, you'd have to get off back here, and then you just follow this collector road all the way through and get off the way you would normally even today. Um, the exit one on 393 essentially stays the way it is today. Um, the weaving is a little bit better, but that was actually functioning uh, fairly well. So that's the proposal for the exit 14 and 15 area. Uh, just to uh, go, if you put it all together, this is a graphic that we uh, essentially just m matched all of the preferred alternatives. Uh, so what you see in yellow is what would be the end result of the project once it was all constructed. And you can see the different concepts that make up the overall recommended preferred alternative. So from the environmental um, process, uh, the environmental assessment is a level of environmental document uh, that comes out of the NEPA, which is the National Environmental Policy Act. So this was, uh, these are all the different resources that we had to evaluate as part of the project. So the environmental document is posted on the website. Uh, as Don said, that the uh, comment period for that just closed on Friday. Uh, we do have comments, so um, so these are all the different uh, resources that we were for, that we had to evaluate and assess the impacts uh, of the of the project. <clears throat> so this is the current project costs for the uh, for all of it together. You can see this is not just the construction. This involved this includes the construction, the right of way the engineering and permitting that will take it through to final design and through and then uh, any mi the mitigation that we've assumed uh, some utility costs there will be some relocations so this is a total project cost right now of 268 million dollars and that's in current dollars uh, right now the the project is not fully funded i think the current uh, state 10 year plan 
uh, includes about 40% of the money that is needed for this project that has been identified for the project. So it is not complete, it is not fully funded at the moment. So this kind of uh, explains a little bit more what Don had said earlier, that now we're going to be evaluating all the comments from the environmental process, uh, from the public hearing. Uh, we'll, the hope is to finish that in the spring. That will allow final design to uh, take place, to begin. Uh, right now, uh, with the current 10-year plan, construction is not slated to begin until 2024. That's when the construction money has been allocated. Um, again, without knowing, you know, when the full funding would be, uh, it could be as late as 2033 before the project was completed. If additional monies were found, obviously that could be uh, moved up. And with that, open it up for any questions that you may have. That was a lot faster than I was expecting, but <laughs> now I have, oh, I already have hands. I guess... I guess I'll go to Mr. Dupree. I think he beat you, <laughs> Byron. Yeah, I know. Gee, thank you. Uh, you guys have worked really hard on this. Um, <clears throat> just for others here, the mayor, the city manager, Phil Hastings, and I, and Carlos, have been on a committee that's been interfacing with you for a long time. Mm -hmm. Don started this project so long ago, he had full head hair and brown. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot of good, and I've been a skeptic on lots of parts of it, the stuff you're doing down at exit 12. All makes sense, but I'd be remiss if I didn't say, you know, the city, after you showed us some initial stuff, the city came up with a list of its goals, of seven or eight goals, and we understand this is a not workable option, and it's uh, the most cost-effective option, but I'd be remiss if I didn't point out that this option really doesn't address any of the city's goals, and I think the city's primary goal was they were willing to sacrifice one of the two historical buildings and moving the power substation in an effort to try and link uh, the river to the city either with overpasses or things like that. And I know you've recommended that we can pursue a Tiger, now called Bill Grant for that. But I think the city still is of the view that this project as proposed is not a good one for Concord. Maybe the most cost effective and help solve the traffic. And we're kind of hopeful maybe that gets considered further. I have this procedural question. If the special committee votes no on your option, and Don may have the answer to this, does that mean they can pick another option and send you back to the drawing board, or do they just get a yes or no vote on this option? Um, well, technically, they could recommend another option. Um, obviously, that gets pretty involved, because then we have to go back into the EA and, and amend that another public hearing. Um, what could also happen is as part of us responding to comments, we put things into the into the report of the commissioner, and then the, they may find for the project with the report of the commissioner changes. So it's not really just this layout that they're approving, they're approving it with the report of the commissioner. We didn't address the issues in the report of the commissioner, but they could just Say so start again. They may say start again, not recommend an option. Just start again. Okay. And just one one follow up. I think the primary concern of the city was trying to get that reconnection, and you recommended that we apply for like a build grant, to perhaps do a large pedestrian overpass over the highway to reach out to that park area over by Christian Mutual. Would it would it ever be possible for DOT to to be supportive and help us submit help the city submit that? build grant applications so that we knew going forward we would get some of the features that we wanted if we accepted this option. Yeah, so it's a possibility um, as part of what the city commented on at the hearing, you know, they talked about a pedestrian crossing. So we, we want to meet with them and, and find out you know, where is this thought to be placed. Um, there's some issues other than just getting over the interstate for any pedestrian crossing. You know, they get over the railroad, you need to connect to some public access, you know, through the shopping center or something. So once we find out more about that, um, we certainly could work with the city to develop a study and maybe that results in applying. And we have a little bit of a 
conflict we'd like to apply to build one ourselves to help fund the entire project, not just yeah. the city's <laughs> pedestrian. So <laughs> okay, we'll have to arm wrestle a little bit. <laughs> Where would you want that? Um, I don't feel like a lot of people walk around Concord anyway. So there was a long, there are some of us who have no hair or gray hair remember <coughs> Concord did the 2020 planning and the goal was to perhaps at the north end of where the shopping center and Bank of America is create a park like atmosphere there and do like you see in Florida there are sometimes 100, 200 feet wide these very gradual pedestrian mm -hmm. crossways that then crawl over to behind 6 Loudon Road and the shopping center the city has a very large ownership interest in that property and is developing as long-term hopes of bike trails and things like that down the east side of the river. So that was the thinking. And I've heard some stuff about Store Street too. What is, is that a city plan or is that tied in with this at all? Well, I, I can show that. I, I kind of went back to this uh, graphic. Up here in red shows what is the city project to extend Store Street. Uh, this is kind of a very simplistic view and they're involved in studies to really formalize this but essentially store street would be extended from where it currently kind of makes a hard left turn up to right. north main it would just continue and reconnect with that existing intersection where constitution and um and and, and um, so yeah south commercial connect today so that that is a city project that would that we show because it certainly uh, is, it helps some of the other things that we're doing with the project. Um, one of the things that we did do uh, after meeting, as Steve said, with the city is along Loudon Road, um, uh, we're not really adding lanes or uh, doing much to Loudon Road other than because we're replacing the bridge, we're going to widen it, the, the lanes because they're pretty narrow, provide uh, shoulders. We're also proposing a multi-use uh, path along both sides to help with that pedestrian bicycle um, access uh, essentially across at least 93. Um, and so that's one of the things that we did to try to at least address the comments that we received from the city. Now, now Steve knows this, um, you know, the the current alignment that we're showing here for I-93 was a direct result of shifting 93 in order to maintain the access to Stickney Avenue. We start to shift this away and to the east and start hitting the substation, hitting these historical buildings, which really is not the city's um, call to make. That's a, those are nationally registered historic things that we have to go through a formal process if we impact them. But it also means that we cannot maintain that intersection of Stickney and Loudon Road. So we have to find other means to access Stickney Avenue other than Loudon Road. So there's, there's give and takes in anything that we look at. I know Byron is next. I'll have to go back here. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, thanks, Steve, for so well stating so well the, the city case. Uh, just a quick question, and that is, do you guys have? I think it's Do you have a rule of thumb on how many years of congestion relief this is going to bring us? Well, the the design year we have right now is 2035, and that so that's what the the model that we have projects so how many out more to years that. Before we have to look at congestion on this stretch of highway again. Well, I mean, it's like I said, we pr we try to project, you know, out as far as as is seems reasonable, but I think what most people say about this corridor is that this is probably the last time you're going to look at any significant widening. Um, you know, south of the of this corridor is a six lane, essentially a six lane interstate from Ma from Manchester up to just short of Bow and 89. This is just extending that further to the north. So this is really, unless you're gonna widen it all the way to Manchester, this is really the last widening that's gonna occur um, of this interstate. So like, in perpetuity? Yeah, I mean, I, I think you're gonna end up having to deal with, you know, managing the traffic. Um, what we're getting though, as we look at the widening, is we're getting very good levels of service you know through that um, period of time so that extra lane and
plus the auxiliary lanes. I mean, that's one of the things that's really going to make this segment function so much better is that between the interchanges where a lot of, you know, residents use the interstate to go from one lo from one, you know, end of town to the other, those are going to make a significant improvement in terms of how it functions and that those trips that are just going all the way through Concord can stay in those through lanes and just travel right through. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't want to not like this, but I think that the city is assuming that some of that traffic is going to go to Store Street once that extension is, is The 93 traffic? I mean, the, the, the intercity traffic. That you're oh yeah, absolutely. And the, one of the reasons that we uh, included that in the graphic here is that our model assumes projects, other projects have been in, have been completed. So by our tw year 2035, we've assumed this connection's already been made. And there's other connections and other projects that are, in, that are certainly just planned now, we've assumed would be in place for 2035. Thanks, Jim. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go to Phil, because he was being patient back there. Sorry. Uh, Gene, I just want to emphasize a point that uh, we've talked about at the chamber a lot, we've talked a little bit in, in the group that we've had, is that um, this project, obviously DOT is approaching this from a traffic management standpoint, primarily, but for the city of Concord, this is much more important. And one of the things that Steve did touch on uh, was how the city is viewed from the highway this is really the gateway to downtown. Uh, haven't heard you talk about what's going on with the, uh, the buildings there, Stickney Avenue, the DOT buildings, the chamber, uh, maybe Tim can speak to this uh, a little bit, or Joe. Uh, the chamber is thinking about how to uh, create some studies of what could be done uh, to improve the appearance from the highway. It's not just about moving cars from point A to point B for the city. It's about uh, making Concord uh, a friendly, uh, business friendly, resident friendly community, and this is an essential part of that. So I'd like to address the full highway garage buildings. Uh, that property is not impacted. It's this, it's right, it's this, this area in here. Right. Um, the whole complex is considered historic. Oh, we want them impacted. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we need to be realistic about what the impacts are. So this alternative does not impact those. We are looking to do with another project, uh, work on the disposition of those buildings. There is money being applied for through the state budget. We can't use federal money on it. It's not impacted. <coughs> Uh, we can't use turnpike money on it. Turnpike money comes up through exit 14. Everything to the south is turnpike funded. We can't use turnpike money to demo the highway garage buildings. So we're looking for state money to do that. Um, we want to work with the city. I mean, maybe <coughs> demolition isn't the answer. Seems to be the answer up front, but we want to look at that, talk to the city. Maybe there's some repurposing use uh, that somebody could do to not demolish them. Obviously, from a historic preservation standpoint, that's, that's the best for that aspect, but it may not be the best for the development of the country. So we are working on that, not as part of this particular project. Other questions, Nani? Uh, very quickly, uh, since you're between 40, just north of 14, since you're moving uh, uh, most of your workers to the east, of the existing um, western edge of the highway, is there will, is is there no impact on the existing bus terminus? Not physical. Oh, right after the highway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, right now, uh, that's what the 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 green shading here kind of shows the <coughs> the physical limits of what the project is proposing so that would be any of the grading and now we come up pretty close to the right-of-way line that surrounds the the bus terminal there but we are not physically touching the bus terminal now 
one of the, and I should have mentioned it during the presentation, because of the elimination of this entrance ramp, which is key to a lot of people, but certainly from the bus terminal, one of the things that that's included in, in our proposal is to, we're going to eliminate this little hook ramp that currently comes off of the ramp from uh, Main Street that allows you to get into Stickney. We're going to eliminate that, but we're going to extend Stickney Avenue up to this new intersection where the uh, Store Street extension would terminate right there with, with South Commercial and Constitution. And then, you know, traffic from the bus terminal could actually just come up through here to access the extension 393 and then they can get to 93 through exit 15. So it's one of the things that we're adding to try to compensate for the loss of this entrance ramp. Now the footprint of what is now the bus station is not affected by this project. Back there, sir. Related to that point, would Fort Eddy Road also back up if people are getting on to 93 through Fort Eddy on exit one of 393 the 93 North? Isn't that also a, a way on 93 North? Yeah, so um, as part of the evaluation of what would happen, you know, if this interest rent was eliminated, we looked at, well, where is that traffic going to divert? And uh, it just so happens that about half the traffic that's using that entrance ramp now comes from the downtown side, about half of it comes from the Fort Eddy or <coughs> up, up Loud Road. So it's certainly true that the traffic that might be on this shopping plaza now that uses that on-ramp to get to 93 is going to go the other direction on Fort Eddy Road, go to exit 1, 393 to 93. So that is an expected diversion of traffic, and we've certainly evaluated that as part of the model. I'm going to go right here. <laughs> Two things, I guess. It sounds like the connection to the downtown from the river has been eliminated, it looks like, and maybe that's been in the process because I thought we wanted to connect the river to the downtown area, number one. And number two was, why aren't we moving the whole thing to the other side of the river so that that becomes, uh, just eliminates all of that stuff that you were doing. So when you mean the connection to the river, I'm assuming you mean that the, some sort of pedestrian crescent like what Steve was mentioning. Right now that is not part of this proposal. We're, we're proposing to enhance, you know, the accommodation along Loudon Road, but there's no separate path. So your other idea, if I make sure I'm correct, is why wasn't 93 just shifted to the other side? Way down the road. All right. Well, we, that was actually part of the, the planning study that we did, you know, 10, 12 years ago, and that was essentially, that was eliminated, just cost and impacts and everything else. So that, that had been eliminated prior to this part of the project. <clears throat> I saw a couple other hands right here. Um, regarding the bottlenecking that occurs when you drop from three lanes to two, that's now happening in Bow, northbound traffic I'm thinking of. Mm -hmm. That would happen in Bow. So when the, when the three drops down to two, before exit 16? It's gonna, it's gonna happen before the river as part of this project. Aren't you still gonna get bottlenecking that backs up into the city proper? We're not expecting that only because as you start looking at the volume of traffic, as you get into Concord, some of that starts to dissipate. You lose traffic at, at uh, Route 3, you lose traffic at Loud, and you lose traffic at 393. So you progressively start to shed some of that traffic um, and because of the auxiliary lanes, you know, that through, those through trips are going to have a much easier way to make it through Concord. So we're not anticipating there's going to be this big backup through downtown Concord as a result of just moving it to the north. And I should also know that it's a little bit off of this graphic. Um, the 93 bridge over the Merrimack River, that is also a red list bridge. Um, that bridge is going to be evaluated as part of a separate project. So um, this project, really the limits of it were that bridge because that was a constraint that we had. I know there was that right back here, sir? Yeah, this is a segue from Phil's question. <clears throat> is there anything in the budget or the procedures that you anticipate 
to address the aesthetic characteristics of the highway itself and the experience of getting off it and going into the city. And is there any way in which uh, local people could have a say on what the decisions that are made are, or perhaps even directly contribute to what happens out there in the form of some city or nonprofit or for profit operation? Right. Want, want to, to that? have an impact on the appearance? So we do anticipate, especially at the interchanges, um, some enhancements either through through landscaping or uh, there's one potential water treatment place we're going to put in. Somebody talked about me putting a pump in there or something. So there are things we'll do at the exits and entrances at the interchanges. Uh, we don't see it doing anything along the, turn, the interstate or the turnpike itself. You know, the city's talked about maybe doing some cleaning up of the uh, bittersweet and dead trees that are between the river and the highway between 13 and 14. So we certainly work with them to do that. Um, as far as input, we definitely would keep at least the, the small city group that we have that we work with in part of design. We, we would welcome any other group or addition to that group as we move into part of design. So we definitely want some local input on, on the Anyone else? Uh, I got one right here, and then we'll go over here. Sorry, I won't forget yeah, you, Bill. I'm just trying to get my hand around the benefit of eliminating the northbound lane of the highway. Okay. Uh, I wish I had a typical section, but um, if we keep, if we, if we add this ramp just the way it is, as the way the current alignment is, we would hit this whole plaza right here. So that was something that we didn't want to do. So all of the prior alternatives where we kept this ramp, in order to fit that ramp in here without you know, impacting this building, we had to shift the interstate to the west. When we, shift, when we do shift the interstate to the west, this intersection ends up being almost where the Stickney Avenue intersection is currently. We shut off Act, then we cannot maintain Stickney Avenue because there's a bridge right here that goes over the railroad, so we don't have enough space for that intersection. Then we hit we hit this building, which is the electric, I forget the formal name, substation, right. That's a, that is a historic property. We also can't uh, provide this uh, access here, which means we also impact the Ralph Pill building. Then we directly impact the electric substation and the, the rail, then the power uh, lines that go south. We hit the railroad, which then means we hit the Capitol Shopping Center. So we just have this domino effect because it's so tight in this one area that's, that's those are uh, historic, environmental, and just expensive utility impacts that are incurred to do that. So this is the least impactful and least expensive way to achieve those goals. I'm going to go over to here to Bill because uh, he's been very patient and I'll, I'll, we have plenty of time for everyone. Um, I think. So we're looking at this bird's eye from on top. We haven't done a side view. Um, you have to go over Manchester Street with the existing bridge. That's 93 yeah. northbound, southbound. That's exit 13. 13. Yes, we're, that bridge you is. Look at dropping down before you get to 14. And you, you did a lot of profile work in 2020 and so forth. So, so we did look at an alternative that did exactly what Bill was suggesting, which is essentially reorient exit 14 with Loudon over and the and the interstate down. We actually did do a rendering, and this was presented at the uh, public informational meetings that we had in the middle of 2017. We actually have, and you can still see them if you go to the project website and you can, it directs you to YouTube, where we did the fly through of the f three uh, alternatives that we were dealing with at that time. There's a concept called O3, which is a, it's a fairly elaborate, you know, um, in terms of the geometry of the interchanges, but that's the one that we lowered 93 and put Loudon Road over the top. And 
when people saw what it would look like from driving, essentially you're, you still have to have the ramps. So this whole thing is depressed with the retaining walls. So if you look at that video, it, it did not get very good feedback from the people that saw it at the public hearing. So this notion of flipping, um, it, it seemed like it was not, it wasn't as well received as you would have expected, not because it didn't do some of the things that 2020 thought, but that visually the interstate itself was not, was not attractive. So if you go to the website, you'll see that there are, there's three alternatives and there's uh, flybys that show what it would look like. What's the website address, Jim? It's, uh, Oh, it was the last slide, i 93 boconquercom Thank you. And uh, there are copies. The, this presentation is very similar to the one that we gave at the public hearing. Uh, th so that is on there. There are large PDF versions of all these concepts uh, that you can go in and zoom in and, and get a much better look at. The, the, the video of the renderings is there. So there's a lot of information that you can see. We got one over here, and I know I just got one in the far back. Yes, sir. Uh, could you recap the timeline going forward from today? Nope. So, uh, as, as Don said uh, in his introduction, so we just finished the comment period for from the public hearing and the environmental documents. So now we're in that. We're assessing the comments, and we have to formally respond to any of the comments that were submitted. Uh, we'll do that over the next few months. The hope is that by the spring of next year, we will be able to finalize the environmental document. Once there's a record of decision, then later next year, then that will allow the project to proceed into final design. With construction at this point not slated to start until 2024. Way in the back, the lady's been very patient with Thank me. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so my name is Laura Hartz, and I'm speaking on behalf of clients um, at Eddie Plaza, um, which you sort of referenced, and a, a couple other folks have mentioned along for Eddie Road, um, the, there will be this expected diversion. Um, we just wonder if that's actually a shifting of a state cost normally, so the traffic along Interstate I-93. Um, the city now has to maintain an increased burden on Fort Eddy Road and potential stacking and backing up as people try to enter businesses along that road. So I'm wondering if there's been any thought to an accommodation or um, how to address that, that issue. Well, I think with the number of vehicles that we are anticipating, it's, it's not to the level that it's going to have a detrimental impact on the flow, the operations. Um, there's still a signal along Fort Eddy Road that's really going to um, control the flow of traffic along Fort Eddy Road. So while there is an increase in traffic, it's, it's not a significant enough that it's going to really have a detrimental impact in just the operations and the level of service uh, along Fort Eddy Road. There is additional trips. But there, it's not hundreds and hundreds of trips in a peak. It's, it, I mean, that ramp had, a, I think it's about 300 vehicles, you know, in the peak, in the future peak. Um, and only half of that's coming from this side of the river. And we know some of the traffic is going to divert even up the hill. So it, it's not a sizable enough volume of traffic that you're going to see a real decline or detriment to the operations. And there was another woman here who had a question. Um, I'm Susan Leahy, and um, my question is this. Uh, given that this is a forever decision for the city of Concord, um, this particular widening, uh, and given the city's forever <laughs> desire to have some kind of connection between the downtown and the river, what is the best advice you could give us in terms of uh, working towards making us more like that happen? Well, I think what Don had said is that I think it's the intent of the team to, you know, now that we have the common periods over, we have a formal letter from the city making some of these requests. We're going to sit down and say, you know, what is it that, you know, the city really wants to do to make sure that one, we have a better understanding of where they want to put crossings and then we can work with them to try to, you know, come to a mutually beneficial understanding. Um, I think it's, and I know it came up about costs. I mean, the real issue here is that this 
project is already underfunded and you know there's a you know we're trying to make sure we're realistic about what we can propose at this time but we certainly want to make sure we don't preclude anything that could happen in the future time for one more oh sorry you've been okay um so this ties back to uh, both river access and, and visual so at i-9389 you talked about grade changes we, right now there's two levels of road traffic Are we talk about three or four levels no not not with our proposal okay. and then along the river by 14 it looked like the the highway was right up against the river so there would be an elimination of access to the river there right well there is uh between between 93 and the river now there's no access provided there now and we're not proposing to provide it so you eliminate it because the road's right against the, the river there yeah yeah we're not right now we're moving the road a little bit closer to the river and there's going to be a retaining wall that we have to construct to place the interstate where we're proposing back to the 3d part of 15 is that going to be multiple levels also or no um this is still the it's this is the bridge that's going to take 393 over 93 it's going to be higher just because it's a longer bridge but probably three or four feet higher it's still a single level and that's one of the benefits of this clover stack these other new bridges that carry these direct ramps are also just a level above and that video that i was saying it's it's unfortunate that w when we did those we didn't have the f2 but there is a concept f which does show what this configuration of exit 15 will look like and you'll see that it is it's still just a two level interchange but there are more bridges at that second level okay yeah, can you hang around in case absolutely any other questions thank you very much gentlemen